Hi everyone, it's Nadia and Jake. We are back for, it's one of my favorite movies, so I guess I'm already giving away the rating by saying this, but it's called Barbarian. This was one we went in totally blind. We uh, had no idea what to expect. We just heard that it was- We didn't watch the trailer at all. No, yeah, we just heard it was good and I went, and reviews said, don't go in knowing nothing about it. I went, okay, I didn't watch the trailer. Neither of us knew anything. Although I will say when I watched the trailer after I watched the movie, it doesn't really give anything away. And yeah. it's very different when you watch the movie than when you watch the trailer. So I think it's safe if you watch the trailer, to be honest. Yeah, but still, we didn't even know. Like the trailer shows there's something with the tunnel under the house. It's That's very it. misleading it's, though. It's, it's mysterious. This is a really interesting movie. We'll get into spoilers later, but we let's just talk a little bit about our experience. What were your first impressions of this movie and what were your impressions leaving the theater? I would say my first impression was, oh, okay. Like I thought I knew, I thought it was very typical. I thought it was very like, oh, I know what's gonna happen. This is a typical scene. The got bad guy is very typical. She's so stupid, which I stood by the whole time. Yeah, I mean, but, the, first, the first act basically is just following a girl who's... But, well, don't don't give it away. I'm not going to give it away, but the, but the beginning of the movie starts out, this woman is... Uh, Tess. Tess. She's, she's in a town, she's looking for her Airbnb, and it turns out someone has also booked the same Airbnb, or so we think, and it's a, it's a guy, and he gives off... Oh, let's just say there's a lot of red flags, and it's a very interesting dynamic seeing... The, the I think you're getting into spoilers already. Okay, like, okay, but this no no this isn't that. spoilers. This is introduced in the trailer. So this is totally introduced in the trailer, and that's the setup. It's it's a creepy Airbnb situation. Okay, you should just that's stop. The setup. You should just okay. stop. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's really well made. They did really good job at not giving like really the main plot away. It's a fun movie. Like it's it, a fun it, movie. It has a great uh, pace, I think, and it it has it's, it has twists and turns. And I think what's what's so it is scary. Okay, that's what's that's what's great about it is that it is a. A, Scary fun it's movie. kind of a genre bending, I'd say, yeah. um, uh, kind of horror film, but it is genuinely scary. Like I haven't been this scared in the theater watching, you know, a movie since Hereditary. Like Hereditary really scared me. This one really did. It just excellent suspense, excellent build up. It takes its time, but it it's like entertaining as hell, and it brings to mind certain. Um, Movies that I love from the 80s, you know, in the 70s, John Carpenter movies, movies that aren't afraid to go to the extremes of of concepts and not afraid to kind of relish in the the tropes of the genre without being cliched. Cliches you see in every horror movie with the same sound effect, the same violin crescendo, every jump scare. There's a boom to try to like make you jump out of your seat. Like there was, it was authentically creepy and mm -hmm. unsettling without any of that stupid uh cliched nonsense i would i would yeah. give it a i'd give it an eight or nine out of ten wow i think that's the highest you've gone but i i would consider going higher watch i need to watch it a few more times but uh and i definitely will see it again because you know i feel like there's more things to discover when you watch it again i would love to watch it again as well knowing what happens yeah. seeing like if i could pick up on anything other that was subtle and sh such things i really love doing that but um i would rate it probably a nine because it was not one noted at all and i think like you brought up hereditary although i love that film it was scary um i do think it can be like a lot of horror films can be just one noted in a sense of and not necessarily a bad thing but it, it can get tiring like it's all horror and those are fun to watch but this is a nice twist that it's like it's not it takes itself seriously, but there's also moments when it doesn't. And I really like that. And I think a good sign was that within the first 30 minutes of the movie, you were hiding in my chest, like digging your nails into my arm saying this was a mistake. And I'm like, <laughs> this is great. Like, like it was genuinely so wow. intense. <laughs> and, and like you said, it wasn't uh, one note the whole time, which is what I appreciated about it. Because beginning of it, it's just like, pedal to the metal, just like really building the suspense. And then finally, 
when it does let you breathe, it's it's a it's like such a relief, and then it built it. You know, it just it's a it was great. Like it, it was builds, so well done. It was so manipulative. Yeah, that I, I loved it so much. And then when it builds back up, it's like, oh, okay. Then you're so engaged at this point. Like I'm a scary cat. When it reengaged me after that little relief, I was like, okay, I I have to watch this part mm-hmm. because it's too good for me not to know. Like, not to watch the scary aspect because there's a little bit of curiosity that the movie brings within it. So, anyway. And, and, uh, one more thing I want to mention. There is some social commentary in the movie. And I know that's kind of a, a popular thing for horror movies these days, I think, uh, after Us and, you know, like the Jordan Peele stuff. There's a lot of movies that are trying to say something about mm-hmm. society. It's a metaphor, you know, uh, kind of story. And... I thought that this one did it, it definitely had that here, but it was more than that as well. Like that was just an element. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it tied in really nice, but it wasn't like, it wasn't overwhelming. It It wasn't trying to be obvious. It was very flawless. It wasn't, I think there's a way to do it in the sense that it's more realistic. It's more, it's not like, I think when you do black and white um, with characters who are problematic, I think it can present false view of reality. And um, there's something to be said that hey a lot of people who are problematic maybe people that you like you know because you don't know their problematic sides so anyway with that i, I think mean this should- movie yeah this movie had me like wincing in terror and laughing hysterically like yeah and and it wasn't because it was bad it was because it was doing s- just an incredible job like that's so powerful that's great i love that can we go into spoiler because i really want to discuss exactly what you just talked about all right so if you haven't see it, seen it, uh, seriously, please watch it before watching spoilers. Like, please. Yeah. And if you don't like scary movies, then here's a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to watch <laughs> it anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, so, um, what so, would you, what would you, can you go into deeper diving yeah. into what you were saying about the funny and the horror? The movie has this great buildup from this Airbnb situation of, you know, this guy giving tons of red flags, plays played by Bill Skarsgård, who it basically was typecast in the role because he he, he plays he Keith. plays yeah he plays Keith he plays Pennywise uh, the clown he plays usually creepy intimidating roles and he real that the writing just balanced the line of he's being creepy he's being over the top and then no he's just being normal. And there's like that perfect dance between the two of them where she's Mm -hmm. going, am I in danger? Is it better for me to flee or put up with this guy? And it just, it it was so well done. And I think it's important to say that Keith is the guy that tests, they double booked the Airbnb. So Mm -hmm. she's like forced, quote unquote, forced to stay in the Airbnb because right now there's a convention going on so there's no other rooms it's not in a great neighborhood so that's her question right there and it does point out that like okay as a woman you're more likely to be a victim is this guy like he he seems very like gentleman ish but it's also very like Jake said very creepy so um it makes you question as the audience as well. <laughs> but then we find out, she or she finds out that he's part of this like um, music collective or something. That and she's he, interested that in. That she's too. interested in. So they start to bond and yeah. then they start having like this romantic chemistry that was like, okay, great. And um, it's funny because in the beginning of the movie, the second you saw him and the second they started talking, you were like, He's going to kill her. He's the bad guy. Get out, guy. get out, get guy. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know what's fun about what you said is that it does go creepy. Then they have this romantic bond. Mm-hmm. It starts out with like seeming like he wants to impress her. But then it turns and flips into her liking him. Wanting to impress him. Because, yeah. And then what was obvious to me was that scene where there's a scene where she's sleeping. Mm-hmm. Her door gets mysteriously opened. Yeah. He's sleeping on the couch. Um, and... She wakes up. She's like, oh, did he sleep? He's having a nightmare where he's talking to himself. And then she's just hovering over him. And then he goes, ah, what are you doing? You know? And then mm-hmm. it's like, she kind of almost becomes um, the creepy one. And then she's like, it's like, did you open my door? Are you talking to me or sleeping? He's like, I am? No! And like, get away from me! I know, he's like, what's wrong with you? I mean, but <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, and, and I think, though, that builds up then because nothing happens that night. And, yeah. and it's so great because we cut to the next day. And one of the best reveals, I think, is because we haven't really seen the neighborhood in daylight. She goes out into the neighborhood. It is a, a total wreck. Every house is like burned out, destroyed. Mm-hmm. It's set in Detroit. I mean, it just looks like a disaster had occurred or something. Because well, every has- single house, except for... 
the house she's staying in, the house she's staying in looks pristine and nice. So it's just like, okay, there's clearly something going on with this house. Yeah. Um, and she has an interview for a, a job, a documentary job that seems to go well. But when she's leaving, she tells her like, oh, I'm staying in this neighborhood. And then the woman she's interviewing with is like, you sh- really shouldn't be there. Like, it's really dangerous. And she's like, I think it'll be okay. Well, whatever. I think she's into Keith at this point because she's, she's looking Keith, yeah. at his photo because she took <laughs> a photo of his ID and then she's yeah. like zooming in on his face. At first she took the photo of his ID to be like, in case I get murdered, you yeah. know, but then the next day she's looking at it like, oh, he's so he's cute. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah. And then she even tells like the person who interviewed her like, oh, it's okay. I have a roommate. It's yeah. a little weird situation. So like, it's like, okay, she's really in love with him. And honestly, they would make probably a perfect couple um, I don't know. I think it's a little early I think to they say make, that. I, I think they really clicked, and I think they would have made a really nice couple um, because Tess is very selfless, evidently, throughout the film. And this Keith guy, although he presents himself as creepy, it turns out he is a true good guy. I don't know. I don't think they'd be a good fit because when they go back in there and when Tess discovers what's under the house... Remember, she's telling him, like, we have to go. There's something bad. And he refuses well, to listen to her. Well, she goes to the basement. Yeah, but he refuses then, to listen to her. And he, like, blocks her from leaving. Like, Well, I don't think it was, like, I don't think that was an evident in itself. Because it's, like, she's saying there's a basement with a camera and bed. Like, it, it sounds almost, like, more kinky sometimes. Maybe. Well, oh, so well, I think she was, like, he was just, like, seeing, like, okay, well, I paid money for but this. But the way he went about it was not cool. He but was I think creepy. it was intentional with the writing. It was, but I'm just saying, like, he was not. He he clearly had plenty of red flags to his own personality. So you think, like, he has something to do with this house, and then what happens is it gets locked in the basement because this stupid door closes on her at, when she's trying to get toilet paper, and she's stuck down there. And as she's down there trying to get out, she looks and notices that there's a rope coming out of the wall. Mm-hmm. And she pulls the rope, and it opens this door, and... The second, the first first thing she said is, nope. She puts up like a mirror to reflect the light. And then she's like, okay, I need to go in here and look around. And there's this little room with a bed and blood on the wall and like a camera facing the bed. It looks like, okay, this is a, the, a, the disturbing, messed up room of whoever owns this place. Or Keith, you know. But finally, Keith comes and rescues her. Right? And at this point, we think that it's Keith. Because you're right, like, it was a little weird in the way that he stopped her from leaving and he wanted to go in the basement see it himself. So we're thinking, oh my god, just get the fuck out. Like, don't... Don't wait for him. Because he when wants he to goes in, himself. she like he like vanishes and she has she goes in to look for him. And I'm thinking just like leave him. Like you don't need he's to like, investigate. He's like putting you in, like tri- like putting you in. And yeah. He's gonna totally kill you. And he starts screaming help, and that's when she finds another door that has this massive set of stairs going into the darkness. And at that point, she's hearing him scream help, and she like, if I were her, <laughs> she's clearly very very selfless. Because if I were her, I'd just be like. Fuck this. Yeah. I'm going to call the police. Like, they can Especially handle this. Especially because he's a stranger. He's a stranger. You don't know what. Yeah. yeah. We get to this great sequence uh, that just is so creepy and suspenseful of her going through these tunnels. And you could barely even watch. Like, it was so creepy. There's, like, dog cages and uh, things that are just so wrong. And it's massive. It just en- seems endless. And we find out later these aren't dog cages. These are actually human cages. Uh, Keith like jump scares her but in a way that was actually creepy you know like stupid music he's like crawling on the floor saying like we need to leave like like they're coming for us or whatever and then we get the reveal of the monster well I just think that it's important to say that when she was like okay let's go the way that she came from they want she wants them to leave and then he's like pulling her hand and then he's saying no 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 we can't go from there that's where I got bitten and so he's like she's like no we gotta go and he's like crying kind of like pulling her into another direction then we see this woman naked who literally Giant. just bashes yeah his head against the wall until like he's dead and that's times. when we're like oh he wasn't the bad guy <laughs> yeah then it screams and then we cut to 
Justin Long driving on the yeah, beach. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it's really important after you actually watch the movie, you realize the reason why she killed Keith's character is because she's very motherly. Father, grandfather, or whoever else, he was a really bad guy. He was essaying people, and he had cages where he would um, kidnap women, essay his own kid. Right, right. So anyway, I just want to make that clear because it's... Uh, the reason why she killed Keith is because of the way that she was holding on to Tess and he was like, and then she was like crying a little bit because she was terrified of the situation. And then she interpreted that as like, oh, Tess, my baby, um, needs protection. And then she, so she doesn't do very well when you're not calm with her. What happens is we cut to something that seems completely unrelated. Justin Long plays this character, AJ, who's an actor, he's driving on the beach singing a happy song. It's like, okay, what movie do we just step into here? Yeah. We get like a whole other narrative about this actor. He gets a call that there's been some allegations from an actress saying that he essayed her. And uh, he's like, this is false, this isn't true. And they say he's being taken off the show. So he's trying to liquidate his assets, sell some houses to pay for legal funds. Like it's it's a total me too situation. Yeah. And, uh, and then finally we start to realize like, and I think I told you, I was like, I bet you it's his house, the one in Detroit that he, that they're at. And that, that's what happens. He goes back there. He finds Keith and Tess's stuff in the house. And he's like, what the hell? Like, nobody's supposed to be staying here right now. We're waiting for him to, to figure out if he knows what's down there. But he, he doesn't. And he ends up finding it. And, and that was like the comedy relief. Oh, my God. That was such yeah. a funny scene. Yeah, yeah you got to talk about that. No, you, got, you go ahead. Yeah. Okay, because he's trying to sell the place. And he starts measuring stuff. And then... <laughs> And he's looking up how much, you know, do basements count as as uh, square footage for when you're, you know, selling a house. And it says, like, some places, blah, 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 you can list it. And he's like, yes, this is great. And then he starts measuring it. And, of course, he finds the creepy door that Tess found. He opens it. And we think he's going to be disturbed. And he's like, this is this awesome. Is amazing. More square foot. <laughs> He sees the room with the bed and the camera doesn't even bat an eye. He just has his tape measure measuring everything. He finds the door that goes down into this like endless tunnel. And he, he measures everything. He's a very <laughs> dumb character. And it we also so find good. out in the scene before in a club that he actually did essay. Oh, and yeah. he was like, He's like talking about story. it yeah. as like, oh no, maybe I coerced her, but that doesn't mean that and it was it was it was very obvious he's like, not a good guy. You, he's a yeah. very bad guy, very self-righteous and such yeah, things. Absolutely. So he's one of those people that you're like, oh man, I hope he gets killed. <laughs> yeah, well, especially, yeah, like you feel like he's definitely going to because he's like measuring this tunnel, not even batting an eye at this creepy. Stuff. It's just so fun. He's like, ooh, this creepy t perfect. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah. And, and anyways, he, he ends up finding Tess and the mother, which is what it's called in the credits, you know, drags him into a pit. We find out Tess is alive and she tells him like, no, she just wants to treat you like a baby. Stop screaming. The mother holds out this bottle of milk she drinks it smartly yeah. and he refuses so the mother grabs him takes him to another room and tries nursing him mm -hmm. she just wants to mother and so she <laughs> forces or tries to force justin long's character aj to yeah. like suck on her breast and he's like no no and stuff like that i don't want to go through every like plot detail because there's a lot that happens yeah. when you think about it we get to see the flashback to the guy who owns the house the origin of the mother the monster and it's which done. i already explained about it's, what really yeah, happened it's done that. in a great way we we figure out why that house is the only pristine one in the neighborhood eventually tess escapes and she tries to talk to the police who don't believe her. They don't listen to her. And eventually um, there's a there's a, a homeless man in the neighborhood who was chasing her down earlier in the movie that we were like, oh, scared of. Like she was terrified him, of him. And now he's the one rescuing her. The mother comes out and she crashes her car into the mother. She tries to find AJ. I think what was what's worth mentioning is that AJ, when the mother, like she, he's able to escape from the mother, um, goes into this other room yes. where the horrible person who started this whole thing is yes. really old. The man who owned the house. Yeah, and he, AJ, this is like told tells you a little bit about him because he's a guy. Like he's like, oh, like 
women are crazy kind of thing and he's like yeah and then so he doesn't know that he's a, the real perpetrator and then aj goes oh man don't worry cops are gonna be crawling all over this place we're gonna be fine cops are gonna be all over i'm an actor <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and and he but then he watches one of the tapes that this guy has we don't get to see the tape thankfully but uh he watches it and goes like you're a monster and then this he's now so feeble and old and it's you know he pulls out a gun and he points it at Shoots AJ. himself i don't know why i think it's because he said that cops are going to be crawling all around Maybe. he gave an impression like he'd already called or something yeah just so. like this is the end you know they found they found us and he takes the gun and then in the hallway because tess is coming oh, to yeah. rescue uh, AJ, he part. shoots her yeah. in the stomach and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. So he like takes her out <laughs> and then he shoots her. this is like towards the end. I think we get to it. So they be basically end up going to this guy who uh, earlier Jake was saying rescued Tess and he's like homeless guy. He has his fire pit and then Tess is like about to die. And do you think Justin or sorry, Justin Long, <laughs> well, you think AJ is actually going to be redeemed because he's like, I'm a bad person. I'm going to rescue and all those things. Well, like no, that. no, no. I think he he's I don't think I didn't expect him to be redeemed because he was saying like, just because I did something bad doesn't mean I can. Uh, well, he's, I'm a bad person. No, he, you know, and, well, and he, like, was, he was battling. Though. He was like, he, am I a bad person that did a good thing or am I a bad like a good person yeah. that does a bad thing he's clearly like have thinking about the essay allegations and, and maybe coming to terms with that so yeah maybe there's hope for him but uh then the uh, mother no, comes there out isn't, yeah. yeah well i love when the mother comes out because the guy who rescued them is like oh i've been here for so many years and she never comes that's exactly when she comes yeah. rips the guy's arm well i was sad he died but yeah, yeah it was brutal she rips off his arm and beats him to death with it stupidly they can't get out of this like pinned in area so they go up to the top of a water tower which is you know horror movie but whatever they, they go up there aj drops the gun accidentally yeah, yeah at, and they're at the top of the water tower and the mother comes up and he's talking to tess and he's like i may not would like we both won't survive but one of us may have a chance <laughs> he grabs her by her hair throws her off <laughs> this water tower the mother monster no, he goes go get your baby or yeah go home. get your baby <laughs> throws like her off the tower the mother monster character comes jumps off grabs her and i'm thinking in my head okay she'll die but she'll save tess or something yeah. and basically they fall that's what happens at first you know the mother's bleeding justin long comes down and he finds that tess is still alive <laughs> and then immediately he starts justifications for what he did just like what he was doing with the you know allegations earlier in the movie which i mean this is what i mean that the social commentary was very well done and it sometimes it was blunt but it was it was done in a really a way that i thought was necessary and and kind of amusing and he's he's like well you were starting to fall and i just i i just you know you I, understand right yeah you i tried to grab you and it's you slipped you slipped yeah and yeah. it just kept keeps going where it's just like trying to take all blame away from him when yeah. he hurled her off this, this water tower and then um the mother comes back to life Kills Justin Long, right? Love the way she kills him because she like bashes his eye. Oh, she then... yeah, she like grips his head in half. Yeah. Great, great effects. The mother is like cradling Tess and it's like her baby is hurt. She's like clearly sad. And Tess grabs the gun, which is, you know, beside her now. We're wondering, like, is she going to kill the mother? Well, it was really sad because she was trying to get Tess off the floor to get back to the house, but she realizes, like, oh, no, my baby's hurt. Well, the like, mother saved leaving. her. She's clearly a victim herself, too, yeah. you know. And it's really kind of heartbreaking. And I, I was really impressed that the movie kind of took us there to a heartbreaking thing. And then, yeah, Tess Kills shoots her. her. And that's yeah. the end of the movie. The song is Be My Baby, which... <laughs> was great great song choice for the end of the movie long's character portrays himself as a good guy when he's not and that's what i meant in the non-spoiler section about like how people are in black and white like not every monster looks like a monster acts like a monster they just do very horrible things when they get the chance to when the situation is right for them to do so but otherwise they can be completely good people mm. and i thought the movie did like or seem like a good people whatever your definition of that is and then you know i think that the movie did a really good job at showing that and not telling that and i think that's what like 
a lot of times movies are telling you that and you don't really feel it all the way or they're very black and white and like this is a monster. This movie does a similar thing to like Nope, which uh, and like Jordan Peele movies where it, Nope had these great themes and ideas going for it. I just felt like it didn't land the uh, it didn't final. It it all the way. Yeah. yeah, it didn't cohere perfectly at the end. I felt like some metaphors, it just didn't land perfectly for me. Whereas this one, it felt like the monster wasn't just a metaphor for something. Like it was clearly a full story with rich characters there, but there was uh, there were clear theme themes that landed that hit home, and it all came together in a satisfying way. You know, honestly, talking about it now, I'm surprised. Like I felt like it'd be a pretty straightforward review to just be like, "Yeah, it's just like this monster movie." But going through it step by step, it's like, no, there's a lot of layers to this. There's a yeah. there's really a lot going on. It hit every note it needed to in a really great way and in a unique way so yeah and i feel like this is one of those movies that when you review the non-spoiler or spoiler sections important to kind of like go by block by block because there it comes in together so beautifully at the end that like it's it's important to explain it that way in order to be like okay this is why this movie is great and this is why this movie isn't one noted it's, I, I, one of the things i want to mention is when the police didn't believe tess i thought that really tied in beautifully to what tess was saying earlier with keith's character was that as a woman, you're not, you have to be more in a guard. You have to kind of prove yourself a little bit more. And, you know, she, they thought that she was a drug addict because her clothes were dirty and everything else. They didn't even try to like get to know the bottom of things. I do think Tess's character was really naive. And I think at the end of the movie, she gets a little bit more cynical because of Justin Long's character, AJ. Wow, I went back to the house to save this guy. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just imagining her going to like the documentary uh, person who she interviewed with, who she's going to work on a documentary with and being like, no, we're not doing that anymore. Listen to me. Yeah. This is the documentary. <laughs> yeah. I, it's hands down one of the best horror films of at least 2020 too. Go watch it. Let us know what you think. If you haven't watched it, let us know if you want to watch it. You know, we'll see you next time. Yeah, and let us know what movies we should check out this month. All right, talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye.